great. I'm here at uh, Share Dance with Tahir Bashir. Hi, Tahir, and thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. So today we're going to talk about uh, the uh, involvement of uh, independent artists with brands, uh, which is an interesting field. So uh, if you're an ind independent artist, uh, uh, what, can, what can you expect uh, from a brand deal, uh, which is very different from what a megastar can expect, for, for example. So uh, number one, are brands looking for uh, unsigned artists uh, to use in campaigns? And number two, what can those artists expect from those relationships? Um, yeah, yes, I think brands are looking for unsigned artists or smaller level artists uh, for their campaigns for a different reason. Uh, it's, it's, it's the messaging that the brand is trying to give to the, the audience is that you know we're involved at grassroots level, yeah. we're trying to help um, build up a brand and also there's the discoverability aspect of it. So if you've got a great track by an unsigned uh, artist or a low level artist um, and uh, they then go on to fame, you know, there's, there's the association with the brand. Yeah. From the artist's perspective, what can they expect? Uh, you know, generally, you know, there's a reason why a brand will go to a, a, a smaller artist than a, a well-established one and one of those reasons is, is budget so uh, budgets tend to be smaller but having said that you know um, they can get some really supportive deals with brands and it might not all be might not all be about money it could be about support services etc attached to it yeah so there are some really interesting deals out there yeah uh, one of the things that you know uh, I've heard a lot uh, of talk about is the fact that a lot of brands now are offering uh, smaller fees for uh, smaller level artists in exchange for what they call exposure but that exposure is kind of uh, you know a lot of managers are saying artists beware make sure that the level of exposure is spelled out in contracts very clearly just so that you have a guarantee that that exposure is going to happen is that something that you would also recommend yeah because you ultimately you need to you know as an artist and you know exposure is this term which basically means you're going to get free PR but yeah. we're not going to pay you money. So you need to understand what that exposure is because it's too much exposure could be bad. Exposure that you don't capitalize on. So for example if you're a, a band that's about to release a new record or haven't released anything yeah. and you're getting all this exposure that might not be the right timing for you. So knowing what that exposure is, what the timetable for that exposure is allows you as a band to um make sure you can capitalize on it or reduce it if you don't want too much. So it's really important that you know that. The worst case scenario is you do something with a brand and you have no idea what they're going to do with it. Yeah. And then you're in a position where you know, things pop out at the wrong time and that has a knock-on impact on your career, which you know, can, be, can be damaging or just a missed opportunity. Yeah, sure. And do you think that these kind of relationships, can, you can leverage those uh, against your existing release schedule, for example, like I'm, I'm thinking about an artist that would do uh, a smaller artist would do a brand deal. They'd have their track plastered all over, uh, whether it's a TV or, or online. Uh, but they might not think that they'd have to release that track and make sure that, for example, it's uh, sh shazamable. Uh, is that all stuff that should go into into the thought of the overall campaign and trying to get the brand involved into what your plans are as well? Completely. I mean, when we do uh, some of these deals, you know, we insist on cross-promotional activity. Right. So if you've got some music going into a film, for example, um, you know, being able to work, being able to use that bit of promotion or that association with that film, with an album release, for example, uh, that cross-promotional aspect of it is really important. So th that's what I was saying earlier on. Thinking about what this brand is going to do and how you can capitalize on it is, is, is definitely should be part of the strategy. Thank you very much and until the next segment. Thanks a lot.